Oh, uh, okay. I uh, decided to call it working the lane trends because uh, that's where most of our projects are. We just sort of we know where there's mineralisation, so we shoot north or south along those trends and and see what we can find. Um, I don't have a uh, disclaimer slide saying uh, forward-looking statements. You can believe what I say or not. <laughs> <laughs> Um, our projects, so this is basically, I'm going, to, I'm going to take a normal break from what I do to present. Usually I like to present more technical and geological side, and I see that some people are doing that, which is good. Um, I'm going to talk about just what we're doing, because there's just so much there, you'll be here for two hours. Um, we have, um, this is where our current active projects are. Over in the east here, we have the Mount Wellington project. Uh, we have a number of uh, big anomalies there, which is gold-based metals project. Uh, mainly um, copper and zinc are the main uh, base metals, that one. Uh, heading uh, west or northish, we've got uh, Nagambi area. Uh, yeah, I'm not a director of Tim Petra, I'm director of Nagambi Mining, uh, which is uh, sort of a you know, small company. It's, uh, we have limited exploration funds, but we keep poking around and we're finding good stuff. The Gambi mining has got uh, the, the Gambi area north and south of the old Gambi mine, and uh, so you're getting some promising results there. We've got Red Castle, just the other side of Heathcote, uh, on the edge of the Red Castle Forest, and at the northern end of the Red Castle Forest, we've got Rushworth. Uh, Rushworth has got around Red Castle, of course, historic gold mining areas and uh, very um, different geology to the rest of Victoria. Uh, heading northeast again, we have uh, Lockington, which is one of our major projects, uh, and um, we are drilling up there at the moment. Got four eagles there, which Tom just talked about. Keep heading around this way, and we end up with Mineral Sands territory. This is a new one for us. Um, we've been in it now for about ooh, 18 months, and uh, we are looking at mineral sands potential in this area. And uh, also, as part of the Mineral Sands project, we're actually um, looking at the basement sequence and we feel that there is gold potential uh, underneath the Mineral Sands. So that'll be really nice to have Mineral Sands on the top of the gold underneath. It helps with the stoop ratio, I reckon. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and down here is a newish project, uh, Stall East, uh, for Brimstone Resources. And uh, we've just completed an um, uh, 800 uh, sample soil program in that area there, pre preparation for RC drilling. And we've also recently signed up on a, uh, in a central Victoria area here, and uh, we're discussing working over at Horsham. So yeah, we are pretty, pretty, fairly busy-ish company. We are looking, we have a wide variety of projects. We're looking for gold undercover at Bidiyama, uh, Four Eagles. We're looking for gold undercover at Lockington, Nagambi, Western Victoria store west. So this is our major, we feel is our main expertise is looking for these blind deposits. We're looking for hydrothermal gold and base metals in the Mount Wellington project, which is also undercover because, as we'll find out later, the whole our main gold anomalies are actually being thrust over by younger Silurian sediments up to 100 metres <coughs> thick, which is really, so we're really hunting for blind deposits. Uh, we do have some easy targets, near surface gold at Redcastle, Rushworth and Store West, as well as undercover stuff, our mineral sand stuff there. And we've, we've done some resource drilling on the WIM, what was called the WIM 250, that's now called the Donald Mineral Sands Project. And uh, we're also doing a, a massive um, uh, research into quite a large area of um, Western Victoria, looking at the mineral sands potential from historic drilling, and coming up with a new um, exploration strategy and uh, dual planning. So first of all, Lockington. Um, some of these projects haven't got maps. So I'm just going to give you a quick table. Um, the Lockington is about 45 kilometres due north of Fosterville. Uh, the target there is identical to Fosterville style mineralisation. In other words, gold in solid solution in arsen pyrite crystals. The, um, and it's disseminated in sandstones, in the sandstone shower packages. Quartz veins are nearby, and quartz veins are actually are certainly associated with mineralisation, but not a primary component. But the owner is Timpetra Resources, and Pac Rim Energy owns uh, a portion of that. 
their uh, stock exchange thing for uh, code for Tempetra's TPR, so you can write that down you can and then go buy shares, that would be nice. Uh, the regional geotechnic, it's not geology, it's all division turbidites, and under 30 to 120 metres of Murray Basin sediments. Uh, fine grain arsenal, blah, blah, blah. Um, that was uh, found, we found that in um, 2004 through interpretation or target selection on uh, geophysics, uh, follow up with soil geochemistry, we drilled the combined or coincident soil geochemistry and uh, structural targets from the Aramaic, and we got um, gold mineralisation on the first air core hole, and uh, it was really good. Um, I've told you all this before in previous years. The um, temperature resources now, uh, we're, we've drilled five holes. We are now wedging off of one of those holes currently, um, and they are uh, targeting, looks like the mineralisation is sitting in the core of anticlines. Um, interesting thing, we got, yeah, there is gold there, 8.9 metres at 3.7, uh, 6.8 at 4 grams, 5.7 at 3, and so. There's um, got a lot of scattered high grades, you know, like 0.5 of a metre at 20 grams, things like that. But one of the interesting things that have just recently come out, we got a 23 metre zone at only half a gram per tonne, but up to one ounce of gold, uh, sorry, one ounce of silver per tonne. Now, this is the first time I know of, of silver in the ounce per tonne category in central Victoria. So it's rather intriguing. So we're, uh, you know, it's maybe it's a one-off. But that was in Nastapara, I think, like So enough on Lockington. Uh, four eagles, oh, here we go again. The, uh, there we go, you've done all this, uh, Providence Gold, uh, Catalyst. Uh, uh, and the main thing, I suppose, we can follow up on what Tom has said, is that with the duplication of those holes, we had a vertical hole that then came back at the end of the program put in angle hole underneath and one of them where we had 15 grams came back at one another one where we had one gram came back at 15 what it really means after looking at all of the data uh, is that if we get a 0.5 of a gram if we repeated that by another hole right next door to it there's a chance it could be 15 or 30 or 80 grams per tonne that's the nature of the business so, uh, yeah, if you in this thing, if you get a 0.5 of a gram, it could be in all body. Um, in Mountain for Eagles. Wrong one, this one. Uh, Nagambi. Nagambi is interesting. The, uh, it's the old Perseverance mine, uh, which is about four kilometres east of Nagambi town. And uh, five kilometres, sorry. The, uh, we're looking at Silurian Devonian uh, sediments, and they've been faulted and faulted by north, uh, sorry, south directed um, uh, thrusting, giving us north dipping uh, faults and uh, east west fold structures. They, uh, and the um, mineralisation is developed in um, uh, breccia zones in these folds, which are produ produced by these folding. Um, no modern exploration outside the mining lease. Perseverance did a very little uh, regional exploration, looking for a thing. Uh, but what they did do a little bit of soil sampling. Uh, we've done more uh, in-depth soil sampling using more modern methods, you know, partial leach methods, as well as uh, uh, aqua And um, we have generated targets for testing by air core drilling. And we've air core drilled one, and we've got a um, uh, 23 kilometer basement, gold in basement anomaly, which is going to be, we've got to do infill drilling on that one to put, fix that one up, see what it means. Um, change, there we are. And so basically what we come up with a model of the Nagambi thrust goes right through the mine. These are the two main pits, they're full of water, that's why it's blue, in the old mining lease. And we've got the race course thrust, which has got this anomaly outlined by air core drilling. These big red blobs, I mean, how big do you want to make them? They're equal, they're, sorry, they're uh, soil anomalies only at this stage. And I feel as though there could be a whole series of thrusts which actually wrap around and shoot up into the Bayless and Shear Zone. It's not an anticline, 
on the maps, it's actually a shear zone that favours them. Big thing comes down here and they roll around. Big thrust, like big teaspoons, shutting up from the north, uh, partly due to the Governor Fault coming down. I can get like Ross Cady if you like, really. <laughs> Is there much cover there, Jeff? North and south? I... <laughs> it was pretty scary because we started drilling over here and we're getting 80 metres uh, and it got caught up in the mangrove gravel, it was blocking up the beds and that would have pretty horrible. And uh, so we ended up shifting north and we're back into 20 metre cover, which is much better. Mm. So uh, the 80 metre cover in the gravel was just pretty ordinary. Um, West Victoria, gold undercover, West of St. Ana, Donald Mineral Sands and Sovereign Gold, both companies, the subsidiary of public company Astron uh, and Limited. Uh, we're looking at quartz here, we have sediments in Murray Basin uh, heavy mineral sands deposits, but underneath that we've got the Cambrian aged low grade metamorphics, and they've been intruded by little stocks of, uh, and bodies of um, Devonian granitoids. I'm not really sure what they are because they're all undercover. Uh, but they're probably uh, granodiorites. Uh, and we're looking for orogenic gold in the Hagen Water region with reverse faults, like the um, uh, Percy Dale Fault and the Yamaha Faults and the Lands Faults. But there are also a lot of cross structures ripping through there. <coughs> At the intersection of these cross structures, the main sheet things, we've got these little stocks that have popped up. And, well, there's a chance of magmatic uh, hosted copper gold things. And we've used soil sampling and air core drilling so far to work those things. There's our regional area of magnetic maps. If you want to know, it's the first VD uh, magnetics with automatic gain correction reduced to pole. Uh, we have a big uh, thing called the Rupunya pluton just in here. And uh, we have these things right here. There's a nice little anomaly right on the intersection of these things and this lineament coming down that way. I haven't put in the major uh, structures like the Navarre, the Percydale, and the um, uh, Conconjella, which runs up through there, and uh, there's other faults, but you can actually see those big ones on the main trends. These are overlain by, look at that one, there's a, if you can just see it, you'll find a set of three or four little lines, and there's overprinting things which are coming in oblique to the main basement structures, and these are probably magnetite rich. Um, not rich, but magnetite containing strand lines. Uh, so they give you, they help in target uh, mineral sands, but the main target of mineral sands these days is Zircon, which is not. Redcastle, we're going to be into the new service gold projects. Redcastle, we have um, main project, main exploration tool we are using there is Costini. The Redcastle area it has virtually no outcrop. The only outcrop is in the old workings and maybe on the roads. But the soil thickness is only about 30 centimetres. So you get this blanket of soil, which I think must be something to do with the uh, Permian glacial period. Uh, and you also got the pizolites and the tertiary um, ironstone event um, the, on top. So, but scrape it away with a little excavator and we've got a lot of um, exposure. So we've been doing a structural uh, approach to the, that problem. So trench mapping uh, and we're gearing up for an RC program which will be next year. Uh, we've got three structural domains across the goldfield. This is it. Basically the Redcastle North Zone, the Redcastle South and then over here the Moorumbul Zone. Here all of the structures run this way. Uh, here we have folds. But we have these big interpreted reverse faults running this way. And these divide them up. The mineralisation here in the Redcastle South is completely different to the mineralisation structure that up in here. So that helps solve a lot of the problems of what's happening over at Redcastle. We have, okay, Redcastle anticline where most of the workings were. But we have here a nice little anticline here, upset by this nice little fault that sort of screams up through there, follows the fault axis there, there. We've got a beautiful jog setting. We've got linking faults, linking fault there, going up to this one, which is parallel to one of these ones, and another link coming up 
there, these are all got old working on oh, the magenta dots are pits and shafts, by the way. Is that obvious? Okay. Um, we have up here, got a nice little uh, fold, hit by this uh, reverse thing and dislocated. So in this area here of dislocation, rather than go out and chase the uh, folds, let's chase the uh, reverse faults. Because the reverse faults have also got a lot of folding in the hanging wall. And brecciation and terrible things have happened to them and you can't actually see what's happened because there's, they're hard to map because they're really messed up in the hanging wall to these faults. Uh, another linking structure there with folds, dislocated thing. This is a beautiful jog up here. I'm a pioneer. And so lots and lots of targets have developed from lots and lots of old workings. Next one, Mount Wellington project, which is one I've been involved with for a long, long, long time. Gold Search have got it currently, the GSE. Uh, they're a bargain at two cents each. Probably go further south. The uh, mineralisation is in uh, Felsig and Intermediate Cangrian uh, Volcanics, which have been uh, buried by a big pile of Silurian sediments uh, up to 100 metres thick, thrust over the whole lot and, uh, and thus bury them. But we use magnetics to, uh, for the targeting. Magmatic related, low sulfidation system, it's Devonian style, it's not Cambrian mineralisation. Uh, and uh, we're looking at permeable, impermeable, lithological boundaries which have served as a trap. And we have a nice little model around that one. Exploration history, Rylite Creek was discovered by BHP in 1986. Uh, they called it epithermal gold. Well, loosely, yes. Technically, no. Uh, I'd prefer hydrothermal rather than epithermal. Epithermal to me is something near surface, boiling hot springs and things. The hydrothermal is a bit deeper, which they are. Uh, Hill 800 Microsoft Longbridge Violet Hill Prospect discovered in Mount Wellington Gold in the 1990s. Uh, we've used a lot of geological <coughs> mapping with 3D modelling. We do, because of the topography, we can map in three dimensions. And so we model up in three dimensions using micro minor map info, and that helps us really get a um, balanced cross sections and uh, balanced geology. So it's really good for that because of the topography. You can't do it out of Mitiamo where you don't have topography. <coughs> Uh, right, like Creek, 5.6 metres, uh, 2.99 grams with 17 to 18% sink, uh, a bit of lead and copper, and, uh, and a lot of sink in the system. Now, it's a favourable joint venture at the moment. But anyway, basically, what, uh, what is happening in that whole Mount Wellington project is that uh, we are all related to mag magnetic anomalies. So I believe that the magnetic anomalies are due to a, uh, an intrusive event of a granodiorite stock or granodiorite parent, and that shot up little granodiorite or diorite dikes that shoot up into fractures and they pop out in the outcrop in places. Uh, and we have the basement rocks are mostly intermediate volcanics, andesites, la uh, lavas, essentially lavas with a little bit of inter uh, intersediments. Um, at the top of the sequence we have um, the intermediate volcanoclastics, which are big bouldery things and uh, uh, yes, submarine uh, volcanic um, flows, you know, mass flows, mare and debris flows and things like that. And then on top of that came uh, acid volcanic sequence, which is rhyolites, uh, rhyolites and dacites, and then on top of that, a big se thick sequence of felsic related sediments. And thrust over the top of that is the silurium. You know, this is a cartoon, uh, that's not a fault, that's a separation of a couple of kilometres. So that six seventy thing. Rhyolite creek mineralisation appears at the boundary between um, the felsic lavas of the rhyolites and the underlying intermediate volcanic and volcanic classics. The uh, volcanic classics are quite porous, and so it allows. The, so I'm saying that fluids of they can actually chew their way through cracks and things through in the lavas. 
and uh, they can then much more permeable we vent through there and so they actually form out in little veins and things and the main zone of mineralisation forms right on the contact because they can't penetrate through the felsing sequence. That's a, the situation at Rhyolite Creek, at Long Ridge, we've got the same sort of sequence there developing. Oh that's right, sorry, this is um, a Siluria sediments, it's actually, you have these imbricate thrusts and uh, duplexing going on. And so that's Siluria, then you're back into Cambria, and then you're back into Siluria when you drill down. Uh, Hill 800, which was uh, one of our earlier things back in Mount Wellington days, it's right there, and, but it's been ripped off by erosion. So you only see the top of Hill 800, or sorry, the bottom of Hill 800 main zone, but all of this ridge zone is what we've still with the thing. Violet Hill is in there, but that's totally preserved, and that's the major target yet to be drilled. Um, yeah, that's probably all that needs to be talked about for that. Oh, can I put in <laughs> We are expanding, we've got a lot of work on. Uh, we do need another geologist. Uh, we do four, 10 day fortnights when you're in the field, five days a week normally. We do eight till five. During, and it's a nice place to work. It's got a very good managing director. <laughs> uh, and there we are, look at our website. We've almost got all of our projects on that. Thank you very much, Jeff.